Hey everybody, welcome to this edition of 5 Minutes or Less of EMS. I'm your host Kevin Mackey. We're coming to you today from Sacramento Fire Department. This is Station 7 and I want to talk to you today about ketamine. So let's talk about the history of ketamine. Started in the 1960s is when it was found used broadly in operating rooms because it's an anesthetic. 1970s also used with the psychiatric world in depression. The 1980s became an abused drug, especially a club drug like MDMA and ecstasy. 1990s, the FDA shut it down and made it a controlled substance in 1999, much, much like midazolam and fentanyl that we already use. And then for, forward to the 2000s, you've got the special forces, the military operations that moved it into the battlefield for pain control. And that's where we are gonna get the greatest benefit from ketamine in our world. Okay, so how does ketamine actually work? It actually affects a number of receptors through the body and has a lot of effects on different body systems. We're interested in pain. So the NDMA receptors, they're hooked up in the spinal cord to send impulses to the brain and ketamine interrupts that impulse and shuts it down. So it actually turns off the pain receptors going to your brain. That's its greatest effect, but it also has effects on the cardiovascular system. It stimulates the sympathetic nervous system, so it makes patients occasionally tachycardic. It can also elevate their blood pressure, which is what makes it such a useful drug, especially in trauma, because some of these patients are hypotensive and it won't drive their blood pressure down. Other effects in the respiratory system as well. It causes bronchodilation, it causes increased bronchial secretions, the gastrointestinal system, it can cause patients to vomit as well, develop nausea and vomiting. And then the big one we also talk about is the central nervous system. In addition to the pain control part of it, it can also cause hallucinations because it really does cause a dissociative anesthesia. Okay, so why ketamine? Well, we have some opiate shortages we're dealing with, but also more importantly, opiates cause key side effects. They cause hypotension and respiratory depression, which ketamine doesn't cause in our patients. Those are probably two of the more key reasons. Key elements of the Sacramento County policy, it's policy 8066. Number one, you need to use monitoring, cardiac monitoring, SpO2, established vascular access. The dosing of ketamine is 0.3 milligrams per kilogram up to 30 in a 50 or 100 cc bag of normal saline or D5W administered over five minutes. I have a second video after this one that explains all of that. Documentation, you need to make sure you check a pain score and vital signs before and after administration of the ketamine every five minutes thereafter. If after 15 minutes, your patient still has a score of five or higher on pain, you can redose it just like you did before one more time. Key point, ketamine comes in several different concentrations. It's extremely important you know your concentration in the equipment that your agency is using because it does make a difference. Ketamine's effects are dose dependent, how much you give, and rate dependent, how fast you give it. So we need to pay special attention to that. I get asked a lot why we're not pushing ketamine, why we're dripping it in an infusion. When you push ketamine, the patients get euphoric, they become altered, and it becomes very difficult to assess them. Finally, five very important things to remember. These ketamine vials are single use only for a patient. So you use a vial, one vial on a patient, and then it's disposed of. Number two, do not use ketamine in addition to opiates on the same patient. You pick one or the other, you don't cross them. Number three, assess, reassess, and reassess all the way through the process. Number four, document your assessments. And number five, please label the bags and so that when you bring them into the hospital, the hospitals know what medication is in that bag. Okay, that wraps it up. It was pretty quick. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you on the next episode of Five Minutes or Less of EMS.